A few hours remain before Hurricane Irma hits the United States. Hurricane Irma became the most powerful storm ever recorded in the Atlantic Ocean. In September 2017, the world witnessed the devastating fury of Hurricane Irma, a giant born in the warm waters of the Caribbean. With winds roaring at an impressive speed of 185 ways mat, Irma gained prominence as one of the largest and most destructive hurricanes ever recorded on Earth. Its impact on Florida, United States was catastrophic, leaving a trail of destruction that would take years to be fully repaired. However, when we direct our gaze to the vast expanses of space, more precisely to the planet Jupiter, we discover that hurricanes here on Earth can seem insignificant in comparison. In the gas giant, storms occur on truly awe-inspiring scales. Hurricanes on Jupiter are characterized by dimensions that defy human understanding, with a tumultuous and massive atmosphere. Winds with impressive speeds, surpassing any terrestrial hurricane, literally sweep across the planet's surface. These events take on titanic proportions, encompassing areas that would overshadow entire continents on our planet. But what this planet holds within its interior is even more frightening than these storms. Jupiter, the fifth planet farthest from the Sun and the largest of all, with a diameter 11 times that of Earth harbors within its interior, a hellish world where frighteningly strange things occur. There, the clouds display various colors, extremely strong winds, and gigantic storms, one of which is quite evident to us here on Earth, the famous Great Red Spot. This gas giant also possesses a powerful magnetic field that interacts with solar wind, charged particles, and the planet's moons, resulting in immense auroras. Regarding the moons, Jupiter has no fewer than 92 of them, with the four largest being Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Some of them are so large that if they orbited the Sun, they would be considered legitimate planets. The planet's atmosphere is primarily composed of hydrogen and helium, with various layers of clouds formed by different colors and altitudes, moving at different speeds and directions. They create highly unstable and varied patterns. Jupiter's storms are fueled by thermal energy from the planet's interior, which is much greater than the solar energy it receives. They are also influenced by the magnetic field and the planet's rapid rotation, generating strong wind currents. The most well-known of these storms is the Great Red Spot, a storm about 10,157 miles wide, much larger than the diameter of our planet which is 7,118 miles. Do nosso planeta, this storm is approximately 311 miles high, kilometers. equivalent to 40 times the height of Mount Everest. It has winds reaching 311 miles, equivalent to 10 times the average speed of a hurricane on Earth, which rotates at around 67 Van miles. This Essa spot has been observed since the first century and may have existed for over 300 years. Anos de its color is caused by materials brought to the planet's surface by air currents do from the interior. But what this planet holds within its interior is even more frightening than these storms. The height of this immense storm is much greater than the height of storms that occur on Earth, which rarely exceed 12 miles. This is due to the fact that Jupiter is a much larger, hotter, and more magnetic planet, which along with a much thicker and denser atmosphere primarily composed of hydrogen and helium, creates conditions that favor the formation of clouds and much more intense and enduring winds than those on Earth. In fact, this storm was once large enough to accommodate more than twice the diameter of Earth. But since the 19th century, it has been gradually shrinking. In 2014, Hubble telescope images showed that its width had already been reduced enough to fit only one Earth-sized planet. It is not certain what is causing this reduction or whether it will continue until it disappears completely. 
Some scientists believe that the storm is losing energy and strength and may dissipate in a few decades. Other storms in the region are less enduring and more mutable than the Great Red Spot, but no less impressive. They can have winds ranging from 62 to 373 MPI, capable of generating lightning and thunder. But what happens when we go deeper beyond the clouds? As pressure and temperature increase with depth, hydrogen and helium become denser and hotter. This is the outer zone of Jupiter, corresponding to the thickest part of the atmosphere, occupying about 80% of the planet's volume. Descending even more gradually, we encounter an inner zone, the deepest part of the atmosphere, where pressure and temperature reach such high levels that liquid hydrogen becomes metallic, giving it the ability to conduct electricity. From here, things start to get bizarre. The liquid metallic hydrogen forms a giant liquid ocean that surrounds the entire planet, responsible for generating the strong magnetic field of the planet. This ocean is approximately 12,427 miles thick and reaches a temperature of up to 18,032 degrees F. For comparison, the deepest regions in Earth's oceans are about 6.8 to 7.5 miles. Surpassing this deep ocean, we finally reach the center of Jupiter, where we find the core, the most mysterious and controversial part of the planet. The core is composed of rocks and ice, accounting for 4 or 5% of the planet's total mass, with a size equivalent to one-tenth of Earth's size. Despite its size, this core has a mass 16 times greater than that of our planet, making it much denser. This occurs due to the extremely high pressure resulting from the planet's enormous mass, containing much more matter in a much smaller space. However, density is not uniform across all parts of the planet. In general, density increases with depth due to higher pressure inside the planet. However, a notable detail is the presence of ice in such a dense and hot region. However, this ice is quite different from the ice we know on Earth. Scientists call this superionic ice, which remains solid and liquid at the same time, even at high temperatures, due to the extremely high pressure inside the planet. Water is liquid at ambient conditions, but you can generate ices by applying pressure and temperatures. So if you decrease the temperature below freezing, you generate water ice, which is the one we are mostly familiar with, water ice that we find in the uh, refrigerator. But you can also form a different form of ices um, by applying pressure and also both pressure and temperature, as superionic ice is uh, the one that arises when you both compress and heat um, water to very high pressures and high temperatures. So we all know that water is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, H2O, right? But we're talking about super ionic ice here. It's what we call an exotic form of water, meaning we wouldn't find it under normal conditions here on Earth. And these exotic forms of water are made of the same ingredients as the water you and I know, but because of the extreme temperatures and pressures used to create exotic water, those same ingredients behave in a pretty surprising way, as both a liquid and a solid at the same time. But how did this planet reach such absurd sizes? A widely accepted hypothesis within the scientific community is the formation of Jupiter's core much like most planets. This occurred through the collision of planetesimals, types of rocky bodies that contributed to planetary formation. This theory suggests that gas giant planets formed in two stages. In the first stage, the solid core formed by the agglomeration of dust grains, ice, and small planetary bodies. Then, this core attracted a considerable amount of gas from the primordial nebula that gave rise to the solar system, all of this about 4.6 billion years ago. If you're thinking that one day we'll reach the core of this planet, it's best to lower your expectations. 
According to a simulation conducted by NASA scientists, a person falling onto Jupiter at a speed of 31 biwabs toward the planet's equator, even using resilient special suits, would only penetrate about 3,107 miles into the atmosphere before being vaporized by the extreme heat. This depth corresponds to approximately 3.5 times the radius of Jupiter, which is about 888 miles. But if the hostility of its environment prevents our access to the core, how do we know everything about it? One of the approaches used by scientists to study Jupiter's core is to observe its interior and measure its structure, density, and gravitational field. These measurements reveal the size, shape, and composition of the core, providing valuable insights into how it formed and evolved. A mission that has significantly contributed to this task is NASA's Juno, launched in 2011 and orbiting Jupiter since 2016. The Juno probe has been studying the planet using advanced scientific instruments to measure the gravitational and magnetic fields while probing its interior. But the biggest surprise came from one of Juno's most recent discoveries, which added even more complexity to the understanding of Jupiter's interior. It has been revealed that the planet's gravitational field is more complex than previously thought, with anomalies that can currently be explained by two possibilities. The core is composed of a mixture of rocks and metallic hydrogen, extending halfway into the planet's radius, or the core was partially destroyed by a giant collision with another planet billions of years ago. These possibilities challenge previous hypotheses, opening up new ideas about its origin and evolution. If we're going to understand uh, Jupiter's interior, we're going to have to look a lot deeper than we can look with the MWR. And so to do that, we have two techniques. We measure the planet's gravitational field and we measure its magnetic field. The gravitational field we measure just by looking at the orbit of Juno as it passes over the surface. The magnetic field we measure with a pair of instruments out at the pointy end of the solar array. And these two uh, two methods will probe the deep interior of the planet. And uh, oddly enough, Jupiter's interior is uh, quite a mystery to us. And that's ironic because it's made up of the two simplest and most uh, abundant elements in the universe. That's hydrogen and, and helium. But the problem is it's under such great pressure in that environment that it behaves in very mysterious ways. So. I can only explain to you what we think the interior of Jupiter looks like at this time. The Juno mission is still ongoing, with the expectation of collecting more data that can contribute to unraveling the mysteries surrounding this gas giant. And that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'm eager to hear your thoughts on the subject and any questions you may have, so please leave them in the comments. If you're not already part of our community, please like and subscribe. You have no idea how much it helps us produce more content like this. Thanks a lot and see you next week.